page six, see me play. Now, I didn't cover anything prior to this page in this book because all of the stuff there we're going to cover as we go through the book. I prefer to use the actual pieces. If you have any questions about any of that, let me know and I'll try and help you out with it. But I'm going to talk about all of it pretty much anyway. Right now, let's just focus on see me play. Now, you got all these symbols, musical symbols in music, and it's important that you learn what they are. Now, we'll take them a little bit at a time. So you've got time to absorb them, and you're going to be using them so much, or so much repetition involved, hopefully it won't be too much of a trouble for you to memorize. There's a lot of memorizing going on, but you use it, so hopefully it works. So in See Me Play, you see that five lines, there's two sets of five lines. We say it's an upper and a lower set. We call that a staff. That's where the notes are going to be. Those notes are those circled things. Tells you which key on a piano to play. Because there are a lot of keys on a piano. And this particular one, I'm just going to tell you, it's got the name of the note in the middle of this symbol. The author has done that just to help you out. The note normally doesn't have the name in the middle of it. But that is a C. And it is a, on the piano, you go toward the middle of the keyboard. It's not in the middle, it's close to it. Usually there's a name here. You can't see it, but the name of this piano is here. And the C is at the bottom of a group of two black keys. Now, there's a lot of C's on the piano because if you see the groups of black keys, you have three and two, three, they alternate. A lot of repetition going on. The C is the bottom note, white note, of a group of two. C, 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 lots of C's. It's just a lot of repetition going on, huh? Well, that note in the music is only this C. Not any of the others. Those other C's are other notes. So we'll get to that later. One, one C at a time. So when you see that C in the music, whatever the music is, you're going to play that note on the piano. That's how it correlates together. Now there's a lot of other symbols here. I'll, I'll cover them as we go through the book because, you know, one thing at a time. Let's not tackle everything right now. This video will last an hour. Ugh. The first, you see the first C there? We're going to play it. And then we see another C, we're going to play it again. And we see some more C's, we're going to play the note for every one of them. Well, we need something to tell us when to play it. Because not all notes last. I can have long ones. I can have short ones. No, I, I need something to help me out here. And that's, you'll notice the notes on the first line here. First was just a circle, and the second one's a circle, and the last one is a circle. That's the first line. Those are called whole notes. Whole notes. Other countries call them other things. I'm going to stick with the American standard that's whole note. Look at the third, oh, uh, uh, it's the third note over and the third and fourth notes. It's got a circle, but it's got a, a line. We call that a stem. Circle with a stem. That's called a half note. Half note. So we got a whole note. We got a half note. Isn't that fun? Oh boy. We'll go to the second line. You see all these notes? The circle's filled in. It's solid. Those are called quarter notes. So now we got a whole note, a half note, and a quarter note. You see a pattern? Half. It starts with whole, and then each one divides it in half. Whole, half, quarter. And I could keep going. 16, 32, 64, 128, blah, blah, blah. This is the way it works. Each one just divides in two. There's two quarter notes and a half note. The same as. A half note is the same as two quarter notes. A whole note is the same as two half notes. Two halves make a whole. Well, if that's the case, then a whole note is the same as four quarter notes. It all relates. So all I need to know is 
the beat. It's like a drum. Something beating. One, two, one, beating. And if I'm going to play a quarter note on each beat, that's how fast I'm going to go. Then a half note, I'm going to hold it down for two beats. Two, one, two, one, two. A whole note, I'm going to hold it down for four beats. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So the, the notes, half note, whole note, or whatever, that tells me how long to hold the note down in relation to the other notes. Well, those numbers, that 4-4 four, four at the beginning, they talk about it on page 7. It's called a time signature. Well, people sometimes get confused here. Don't confuse time with speed. It's not telling you how fast to go. It's just telling you how to count time signature. How to count the time. The top number tells you how far you have to count. You're going to count to 4. And you're just going to repeat it. Four, four, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Blah, blah. Well, if you're going to count it, you need to know what you're counting. Something needs to equal a beat. And that's what the bottom number is. It tells you what you're counting. And that four stands for quarter notes. There's a lot of fours in that. Isn't it? So we're counting quarter notes. So it's telling you there's the equivalent of four quarter notes that you're going to count to four. I, I want to say four quarter notes in a measure. It doesn't help you if you don't know what a measure is. But if you look on page seven at the top, they're showing you a measure. It's the distance between those vertical lines. So the, the music is divided up here. And so every measure, according to this 4-4 four, four time signature, every measure has to have four counts in it. The equivalent of or the same as four quarter notes. Well, if a whole note gets four quarter notes, you got one whole note in the first measure, that's it. That's good enough. The half notes on the third measure over, there are two each, so that's four beats again. So that's one, two, three, four, that's it. And then the last line, you got all three of them. You got quarter notes, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and then the half notes, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then the whole note, you got them all. This tells us how long to hold the notes down. Now there's more stuff I could talk about, that's enough for now. The only other thing I have to add is that repeat sign at the end. It's a thin and thick bar line. A bar line are those vertical lines. They're called measure lines or bar lines because they divide the measures or this, you know, they show you where the measures are, a measure line. Or sometimes a measure can be called a bar. So I could say third bar over. Well, that's the same as third measure over. Because I don't show these books in my videos at all. They're copyrighted. I can't reproduce them. I explain, I say first line, third measure. Or first line, third bar. And so you go to the first line, that's the first set of stabs that are connected with bar lines. So it's two stabs to a line here, is what I'm saying. And you count over to the third measure, and that would be, like here, that would be those two half notes. So that would be the first line, third measure. Whatever. That's how I explain where I am in the music, or what I'm talking about. So that repeat sign, let's get back on that. You have a thin and thick bar line. And we don't say a thin and thick measure line there. They're just bar lines with the two dots. And that is called a repeat sign. It simply means go back to the beginning and play it all again. Repeat it just once. If they want it more than once, they got to put a note or something in there to tell you how many times to play it or repeat it. So let's play this. I, I like to do a play with me in my videos where I play it really slowly and you play it with me to make sure you're playing the same note I am because you have to listen. Are you are you really playing? Can you tell if, if I play a note and you play a note, can you tell they're the different or the same? Can you tell they're different? They should be the... 
you know, we got a problem if you can't hear the difference, as I'm saying. I don't think I can help you with that. But you make sure you're playing the same note I am at the same time I am. That way your, your rhythm is correct. The rhythm is the long and short of the notes. And that's what I like to do now on this. I, I want to do the play with me. I'm going to count us in. I'm going to, I'm going to give four counts. I'm going to go one, two, ready, go. And then we start playing at that speed. And we play it all through with a repeat. So we'll play it together. So let's do that now. Now, what I'm going to tell you is you take your right hand thumb and you put it on that C and your other fingers can go on the notes next to it. That's okay. And we're going to play this whole thing with this right hand thumb. Just like that. You could use other fingers. You could use the other hand. If there, no rule says anything on that. I'm just telling you for now. Use the right hand thumb. So I'm going to get, count us in at four. Four counts. And then we're going to play it together. So go ahead and put your thumb on that C. And here we go. One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four. 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 One, two, three. Repeat one, two, three, four. 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 Off.